Hi there, everybody. I couldn't believe I've had a couple of couple of video outtakes already. Anyway, welcome to Traveling Light with Watercolor. I just wanted to share um, the answer to a question that uh, popped up in my Tuesday class. So we were painting um, a big Italian landscape with um, this uh, villa with a windmill and there's farm fields and all of that kind of stuff. The class was all about, um, it was all about greens this past Tuesday, painting all different kinds of greens, learning how to mix all sorts of greens from just what you have on your palette. And it's in my series. It's the second week in my series of all about color. So anyway, um, one of the questions that came up was how do you just paint trees how do you paint tree shapes if you haven't done this before so i said you know i'll put together a little mini video um for everybody so that um you know even if you're not in the class you can join in and have a taste of what we you know, what some, some of the stuff we do um the thing that's nice about these live classes is that you know at any point you can pop in and ask a question of you know what are you doing with your brush you know what is that shape how do you get that shape so anyway um talking about tree shapes um you know i spend a lot of time outside hiking and um just just a lot of time in nature and i've been doing this for decades so trees are now kind of second nature to me but if they weren't and i wanted to figure out how to go about doing this, the first thing I would do, and what I just did a minute ago, was to Google tree shapes. And holy cow, there's all kinds of great information, little diagrams, black and white, all in color, photographs, painterly, so anything. Um, so you could just Google tree shapes, and that's gonna give you an idea of what kind of silhouettes, because essentially what we're looking for in a watercolor sketchbook usually is, um, the silhouette of a tree, that is a big identifier of um, what it is that you're, what, you, uh, what you're actually seeing. So um, let me pop down to my webcam here and we will um, talk about a couple of things with shapes. So let's see, let me make sure I've got that aimed right and we'll bring the camera down so you can see, here we go. All right, so let me get my, my pad and my paper. And this is just, um, this is some pretty inexpensive paper. It's made by um, Canson, the XL watercolor. It's not cotton, but it's a great price point. And um, so I can burn through this and not feel like I'm, you know, wasting money or anything. And it's it's a great, great practice one. In fact, I use it for my... Um, test swatches too. Now for, you know, other paintings, I use other stuff, but that's another conversation for a different day. So, you know, when I um, think about, you know, how do I want to put some tree shapes together? Um, I mix all of my, I, I mix all of my greens, usually, not always, but usually starting with sap green. I rarely use this straight out of the pan or straight out of the tube, but I always mix it with something else. So I'm going to mix a little bit of, um, I've got new gamboge right here and I've got, I've already got some green poked in here. Um, you can see when my, my pans get a little messy when I'm really working at the end of the day, I, I, I do swipe them out with clean, clean bristles. But say if you're, um, you know, you're just making some shapes, you know, this whole, this question started when I'm just moving my brush along the paper like this. And one of the students asked, you know, how do I know what to do? You know, how do I know what shapes to make? So, um, oh, Zoom, don't do this. My camera just popped out, just froze off. Sorry about that. So let's pull a little bit of ultramarine blue in here. So there's one, you know, once you Google that um, tree shapes thing, I think you're going to see that, you know, there are a lot of tree shapes out there. Um, it, typically, let's just start with um, 
evergreen. So, you know, there's a lot of trees that have this pyramid shape. And, you know, sometimes these um, branches on them come down, you know, they have a nice downward sweep. Some of them are a little tighter formed like this. These uh, ones that have the these beautiful sweeping branches are really pretty. And they're fun to paint too. So also by doing this, you know, when I'm playing around and practicing, just go in straight with your brush. You don't even have to draw these. This is the fun of it is just um, try doing this with just the brush. And this will give you a chance to play around with the belly of the brush and go up, going up on the tip of the brush. So the belly of the brush is when you are, you saturate your brush and you're going to mash it down on the whole belly and you get a big sweeping stroke. Or if you're up on the tip, you know, you can get this, these nice fine lines like that. And, um, Pull that down a little closer. So it really gives you a chance to, you know, the just playing around like this really gives you a chance to get a feel for what your brush does. So let's see what other shapes might we have. We have um, there's another shape in this one Google article that I found. It's called full crowned. So let's see if we just um, it looks like almost like a big oval. And it's really tall. So also, you, you'll see if you're out, you know, observing trees close to where you live, some of them have what I call sky holes or air holes. And so they won't be a big solid, you know, they won't be a big solid oval like that. You know, there's going to be some places where some of the branches, you know, clumps are sticking out a little further. And this is trees in the wild. This is not something that's in you know a formal garden that's all been trimmed and hit with a weed whacker or tree pruner or whatever it's you know just grown naturally so you know you um what i find a lot of fun is you know when this is still wet dropping in some deeper colors drop in some deep greens let it flow into this uh more gold color This wet and wet technique is really fun and all I'm doing is really tapping my brush and letting that flow and as it dries it's going to you know sink into the um, the pores. This is a cold pressed paper so it's got a little bit of texture to it and as it dries it'll just sink in really beautifully and settle into each other. That's really fun to do. So and of course we're going to have a trunk. Let's make a, some trunk color out of um, Kind of what I call a lively brown or a lively gray. We're just going to mix up some burnt sienna and some ultramarine, ultramarine blue. So um, you can push that either, you know, if you go heavy on the blue, it's going to be more gray. I'm going to test it on my little swatch here. And anyway, um, we're going to make ourselves a little trunk. You can pull that up through these sky holes if you like. And just let that dry. Another shape that you might find, um, this one is if you live in Florida, and I, this is where I grew up, and they have a shape called a vase shape. So these are these little, um, I guess, sable palms. They're these little short ones. It was a while where landscapers were having a hard time. They'd put them in some new construction, and somebody would come and rip them off and dig them up. Um, Anyway, they look like a little vase. They are kind of short and stout, and they have just a this plume that comes out of the top, they kind of stick up like that. So, you know, you might find some silhouettes like that. Other silhouettes, again, if you're in Florida, that were, and this, so these trees, this was in the, um, the little page that I Googled, just the different shapes. So this shape is called a fountain. And this would be if you have um, those tall palms. Gosh, as a Florida kid, I used to know all these palm names. I've been up here long enough that I forget them. So anyway, in a fountain shape, you would have you know, some of these nice palm fronds that come out and they 
makes sort of like what you'd think of as a fountain. You know, you get that one big frond, the, the main stem of it, and then the, the leaflets that hang down. So just doodling with your brush, this is a really fun, really fun thing to do. You know, you don't have to draw it first, just play with this brush. And like I said, you know, get used to seeing what you can do. You know, does this particular brush hold a good point? You know, does it hold a lot of paint in the belly of the brush? Um, you know, you can use this, it's like an extension of your hand and you can use it almost like a pencil as well. So, um, you know, just don't think they have to draw everything before you paint it. So let's see another tree shape. There's um, in this article that I found. Let's get some more green going here. So another shape that I saw mentioned was called spreading. So this is one where you maybe it's a little wider than it is tall. Sometimes maybe you'll see these in the landscape. So, you know, what, kind of what I look for is what is that, um, what is the silhouette of that? What's the silhouette of that tree? You know, you don't have to go in and draw every branch when you're painting. Sometimes that's just not necessary. But you want to be able to look and see what is that silhouette? Because, you know, if you can portray that silhouette in your picture, um, it's going to make sense to your viewer's brain. I think when we are identifying stuff, our brain first goes to silhouette and it also goes to value. So the lights and dark. So this shape against this white paper, this is a darker value than the paper. So our brain is seeing this particular shape. So, you know, maybe this could be tall, maybe this could be as short as a shrub or maybe a dwarf tree in a you know, somebody's yard landscape. Um, but then again, it could maybe it would be a tall shape. So anyway, these are usually, they usually have a broad spread. Then there's uh, another shape called layered. And a lot of times this is what I, I paint um, when I'm, you know, painting stuff in the woods around here. So let's just say, let me just get some, water and spread this out a little bit. So layered, you know, you've got some of these varied shapes and maybe it comes out, maybe there's a little bit of width to it. There's like big clumps and you'll see air holes too, or sky holes. So I'm not painting any particular tree. I'm just painting shapes that I have seen out from my hikes and my, you know, my time painting outside, you know, on uh, state parks and maybe some national parks, things like that. The time that I spend outdoors, I just start looking at shapes. Um, anyway, so you'll have, you know, some layered clumps that come together in these layered trees and of course you know you can add some tree trunk in there if you like you bring it up through some of these sky holes and you can always adjust if you you know if you're not loving it or you know sometimes you'll see those trees that have like a couple of offshoots We'll have like a clustered trunk. And let's see, what other shapes? Oh, um, another evergreen one that I, I really like is um, ones that have a column shape, a columnar shape. They grow in the shape of a column. So let me pull up some of this sap green and a little bit of ultramarine blue to deepen it, make a nice deep 
So a little bit of a little bit of new gamboge to kind of warm it up, but I want it we want a deep, kind of a deep evergreen. So a nice column-shaped tree. You know, those are the tall, skinny ones. Maybe you'll see um, a row of those in Italy, you know, some of these uh, field breaks. And some of those are really super tall. Or maybe they'll be in a landscape against the side of somebody's house, um, you know, some kind of landscaping element. So they can be fairly, um, fairly tall and narrow. Let's see, let me see if I can get a little bit lighter on the paint. So again, you know, these are fun exercises while you're trying them. You know, if you're not loving what you see, this is why these doodle pages are so much fun. You know, I feel like I was a little bit heavy with the pigment on that one. It's almost buttery looking. So if you've seen my, I have a little free video on my website. Um, you know, when you initially go into my website and it's called the secret to watercolor and essentially it kind of it really helps you learn that feeling of um, pigment to water ratios and why that's so important it's why i call it the secret because once you have a really good feel for that um, it's really everything else starts making good sense so anyway, here I've tried, so this came out a little buttery for my taste, a little bit too heavy with the pigment, and I wanted a little bit of translucency in here, but I didn't want it watery, so I still wanted it punchy with color. So this was a little bit more like milk, skim milk or milk consistency, where this was kind of like cream to butter. So anyway, that video will, will give you a hand in um, figuring out consistency, but... Uh, these column-shaped column, column trees are really pretty. You know, some of them are totally stick skinny and narrow. Some of them have a little more width near the bottom. So you'll see different kinds. If you want to deepen the color, deepen the center of that a little bit, you can drop in some more ultramarine blue to, to kind of indicate where shadows might be. I'm dropping it in while this is wet so it will fuse nicely. If that had already dried, then it would it would you know dry with too hard of an edge. But um, you can see how that starts to fuse in nicely. Let's see. The last shape I want to talk to you about is a weeping shape. And those are pretty fun. So um, I'm thinking of either a weeping cherry or a weeping willow. Um, they're really fun too. And I don't have any, I don't have one in my yard or nearby right now. Um, 30 years ago, I had a weeping cherry in our yard that was amazing. It was so pretty in spring. It had these soft pink, um, frothy things that would come down. And it was an old tree. It was really large. Um, I went driving by there the other day to see if, um, if the tree was still there. It's since been cut down. I was so sad. So it must have been old enough that um, something happened to it. But it was a beautiful tree when we were there. So anyway, um, so I don't have a photo reference of one. So I'm just kind of making this up from memory. But, you know, they have a big, um, almost like an umbrella shape to them. And then they have parts that come and hang down. So, you know, when you're playing around with your brush and getting familiar with what your brush does, this is a great exercise just to um, manipulate your brush, see what it does, do the old what if, hey, what if this tree looked like this? And, you know, move that brush around. You can go down on the belly of your brush, cover a big amount of paper, um, go back on the tip if you want to... Um, Get these little bits that hang down. I'm kind of just really playing here. So sometimes when I'm doing these little what if exercises, you know, because I'm just totally making this tree up, you know, because I wish I had a 
photo reference in front of me, but sometimes it's fun just to play around. Um, so one thing that I like doing when I'm goofing around like this is um, when I do the what if is let's drop in a, just a big brush full of water. And you know what that's going to do when you drop in the water, especially on these areas that are still wet, that water starts pushing this pigment around. And sometimes that makes some really interesting foliage effects. Because that the water, so it pushes the pigment and you know, right now I'm going to have a lot of puddling of um, water on there, but what it will do as it pushes that pigment around, it forms what um, some people call either blossoms or cauliflowers. And, and then it dries in these unusual shapes. You can start seeing this, um, this effect of the paint getting pushed around and it can be really lovely. And so once you drop that water in, you don't want to go poking it with a brush. You want to just drop the water on and then back away and let it dry on its own. So right now, I'm going to get it close to the camera. You can see where, see all that reflection of water. So there's a lot of water in there. So I'm just going to let this sit flat. Let that push the pigment and do its thing. And then um, I'll, I'll post a picture of it um, later on this same thread so you can see how it ended up drying. But anyway, this is a great little exercise to get your brush in gear, play around with the belly of your brush, the tip of your brush, get familiar with it. And remember your brush is, it's like an extension of your hand. You can just think of it as writing. And, and just remember when you were little, how long it took you to learn how to use a pencil just to write your name. And so it's gonna, this is gonna be much quicker because you already know that. You already have this coordination. So now it's gonna be all the easier. Um, this brush is one of my favorites. It's a Princeton Velvet Touch. They're synthetic. Um, they um, so they don't and they don't cost very much. It's um, they're pretty inexpensive, and uh, I'm liking this. I've, it's kind of been my favorite brush for months now. Uh, probably about the last year. I really I go for this one first. Anyway, I hope you find that helpful. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, pop in on the page on the Traveling Light with Watercolor. Just ask me, you know, if, you, if there's certain things that you want to see. Um, I know when um, a lot of you guys signed up for the group, you did answer the question on what's your biggest challenge right now. So I'm going to try to answer some of those challenges too. And if you'd like a weekly, like a little mini, 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 mini video like this, let me know. And I'm going to see if I can arrange my schedule to do that. So anyway, hope this was helpful. And I hope to see you here in the group on Traveling Light with Watercolor. Uh, happy painting and have a good weekend. Bye-bye.